Well, this evening, Francisco and Haley are getting married. And then what a beautiful thing that we get to be a part of. And, uh, they're going to make vows to each other, promises to each other. And we get the privilege as guests, as friends and family, to witness those vows. And we want to remember now and in the future be praying for them and encouraging them to keep those vows. And so I can think of no better way to start today than with the prayer of this prayer. Lord, thank you for Francisco and Haley. Thank you for their love for each other. And Lord, thank you for their love for you. I want to ask in agreement with them that you make their life together joyful and fulfilling for them. I ask you to make them an example to other couples and a pleasure to you. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Who gives this woman to be married to this man? Her mother and I. This past year, uh, both Francisco and Haley interned with me for this year at, at Life Center, at church, as they were uh, practicing their gifts uh, and serving others at church. And so I got to see them from the beginning of this relationship and now to this moment. And I want to say to you guys, thank you for letting me uh, be a part of this. If you've ever met uh, Paco for the first time, he'll say, hi, my name is Paco Francisco, if it's easier. <laughs> I asked what they would like me to call him at the wedding, and they said, Francisco, and he said, because it sounds fancier. <laughs> but I normally call him Paco, and so I am going to do my best to continually say Francisco throughout this entire ceremony, because it sounds fancier, <laughs> and Haley told me to. <laughs> We're going to talk about love, and uh, love is what brought you together. Uh, you guys both love love. I've seen it from the very beginning, how much you just love love and you grew really quickly into loving each other as you met and um, you know Paco you saw it. this guy fell head over heels for you and he became uh, the most adoring caring loving growing boyfriend that there could possibly be and you helped level him out so much and I just want to say thank you to you <laughs> but your relationship has grown and grown and that when I ask you about that you both give the same answer to why. It's because you've already made a commitment, not just to each other, but you've made a commitment to the Lord. And you have chosen uh, separately to make him central in your lives, but now also as a couple to say that God is going to be the central thing to your relationship. And that's going to carry also through over into marriage. And I'm just so proud of each of you. Um, Haley, you to see you grow in your gifts in the ministry and serving uh, middle school students. And, and serving your peers as interns, and Paco as you, uh, working hard at everything you did to show people who Jesus is while you also grew in knowing who Jesus is. But then to see you come together and use those gifts to serve and to love one another and to work through the difficult times together, I'm just so proud of both of you. And it's an honor to really stand here. Uh, but we're going to talk about love. And love is one of those words uh, in the English language that means a lot of things because I love tacos and I love my mom. I love tacos, and I love, I love tacos, <laughs> and I love my kids, and I love my wife, and, and this, love, this word can mean all kinds of things, so you have to ask your questions, we stand on this day talking about love, who gets to define love, what, what is it, and the Bible gives us a definition of love when it tells us that God is love, and his love was given, was shown in evidence by uh, Jesus, through what Jesus has done for us, now, I already talked, you guys already have this commitment to Jesus. You've accepted and received this love, and you've desired to show this love to others. And love is important to Jesus. Uh, during Jesus' time on earth, there were these religious leaders, and they, they strived to follow 613 different laws to try to be right in the eyes of God. For them, they really wanted to do the right thing in God, and that meant following a bunch of rules. So a religious leader would come up to Jesus and say, what is the most important? All these commandments and all of scripture and all this stuff that we know, what is the most important? And you both know he responded by saying, first, love God. And secondly, love your neighbor. That love was the greatest commandment. Love. This love is what you're called to receive from God. Because he gave this love. 
This is also love that as Christians you're called to give to other people, to each other as husband and wife. Uh, so what does this love look like? Because Jesus didn't talk about love only. He also gave examples. And uh, it says this in the book of John. It says, Greater love has no one than this, but they lay down their life for those friends. Because you know this. Great love is not afraid of great sacrifice. And it's not just something Jesus talked about. It's also something he demonstrated. And we see this in the book of Romans, where it says, But God demonstrates his own love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. In John chapter 3, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever, whoever believes in him is not condemned. God didn't wait for us to be at our best before he loved us. God didn't wait for us to clean up our acts. No, he loved first. He loved us right where we are. Now because of these scriptures and many others, uh, I've come to believe that the definition of love is doing what's best for another, no matter what it costs you. And this is what you're challenged with now in marriage, to do what's best for each other, no matter the cost. As recipients of great love, we are now called to offer great love. We love because he first loved us. So even when it's difficult, you're still going to be called to love first. Even when you don't want to, still you have the call to love first. Even when someone is being really annoying, even when Paco is practicing knife fighting with wooden spoons in the kitchen, you get to love first. This is what we've been called to do. Loving first. Haley, I greatly encourage you to love first. Love, love Paco, love Francisco. Add your strength to his. Forgive him quickly. Support him, encourage him, thank him, pray for him. Do what's best for Francisco, no matter what costs you. And Francisco, I greatly encourage you. Love Haley first. Love her as Christ loved you. Be willing to give your life for her. Serve Haley daily and put her needs before your own. Pray for her, encourage her, listen to her, spend time with her. Do what is best for Haley, no matter what it costs you. Love first. Now, this may sound difficult. I hope it does, because it is difficult. And this sounds difficult to most married couples. But God doesn't call us to easy purposes. But these commands to love each other are what God commands us with in the marriage, what he challenges husbands and wives with in marriage. But the good news is that God wants to join in with this with you. That God's in this with you. He wants to help you as you strive to love each other well. And love each other well. And the will of God lasts. He's not going to change his mind. Years later, he's not going to look down the road and decide that he's made a mistake. The good news is that God's going to be with you. The Bible says, faithful is he who calls you, and he will bring it to pass. He's with you. This is Christ loved us that we're to love each other. It's love with no limits and no cost. And it's with the help of God and the leading of his spirit that we accomplish it. As you two pursue the love of Christ in your relationship, you choose true love. And that's what's going to hold your marriage together. So it brings me to this question. Francisco, do you believe it's within God's will that you marry Haley? Yes, I do. And Haley, do you believe it's within God's will that you marry Francisco? Yes. Well, then you're ready to make your vows. I'm going to ask you to come here. And face each other. Yeah. <laughs> As Francisco and Haley uh, now make their vows, I want to encourage you, if you're here with your spouse, maybe grab their hands and remember the vows that you made to each other on your wedding day. Francisco, repeat these after me. I, Francisco, take you, Haley. I, I, Francisco, take you, Haley. As my friend and love. As my friend and love. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. With deepest joy, this joy. I receive you into my life. I receive you into my life. That together we may be one. Together we may be one. Together we may be one. I will lead our lives in obedience to God's plan. We will lead our lives in obedience to God's plan. Praying for you and encouraging you. Praying for you and encouraging you. To become all that God intends. To become all that God intends. 
I will care for your needs. I will care for your needs. Placing your good above my own. Placing your good above my own. Looking always to Jesus Christ. Looking always to Jesus Christ. As the source of my strength. As the source of my strength. And ability to love you unconditionally. And ability to love you unconditionally. As long as we both shall. As long as we both shall. Haley, will you please repeat these vows after we? I Haley take you, Francisco. As my friend and love. To be my wedded husband. With deepest joy, I receive you into my life. That together we may be one. As your wife, I will respect you. And follow your leadership. Trusting God as you and I follow Jesus. I will pray for you and encourage you, desiring to help you become all that God intends. I will serve you with joy, placing your good above my own, looking always to Jesus Christ as the source of my strength and ability to love you unconditionally. As long as we both shall live. You guys have just made beautiful vows, and they're vows that are going to take work to keep. And so you've chosen rings as reminders of the promises you just made, visual reminders to seek God's help in keeping these vows. So please, Alan, I think you have rings behind that. Francisco, would you repeat after me as you put this ring on Haley's finger? I will. Haley, it's with this ring I commit my love to you. Haley, it's with my ring. With this ring that I commit my love to you. And take you as my wife. Take you as my wife. Today I pledge to honor you. Today I pledge to honor you. With all I am. With all I am. And all I will become. And all I will become. Haley, will you repeat after me as you put this ring on Francisco's finger? <laughs> Francisco, it's with this ring I commit my love to you. And take you as my husband. Today I pledge to honor you. With all I am. And all I will become. Paco and Haley, Francisco and Haley have chosen um, as their first act as husband and wife to participate in communion together. So it was on the last day of Jesus' life that uh, he would sit with his friends, with his disciples, and he would hand out the bread and he would say, this is my body broken to you. And he would give them the cup and say, this is my blood poured out for you. Before he would go and make a great sacrifice, the sacrifice we've been talking about. This is what he was saying, I'm going to be with you. As we take communion, we're saying, God, we are with you and you are with us. And you get to do this now in your marriage. You're also going to be participating in a sand ceremony where you're going to combine one color of sand with another color of sand. And if you tried to take those two things apart, it would not work. Because this is signifying you guys coming together as one. Two individuals falling apart, now coming together as a couple. We're doing a good job staying focused on it. Now, as Francisco and Haley are taking communion and praying together, I'm going to encourage you as friends and family of Francisco and Haley to be praying for them as they also are praying for themselves.
Francisco and Haley Martinez. 